Hi students, I am Kashish Manshi and today we are going to begin with the first poem of our literature that is Summer Sun by Robert Louis Stevenson. So before beginning with the poem, let me give you some details about Robert Louis Stevenson. Robert Louis Stevenson was born in the year 1850 on November 13 in Edinburgh, Scotland. He was a Scottish lawyer, essayist, poet and author of fiction and travel books. Initially, Robert started his career as a lawyer but later on became a writer. Stevenson loved to travel and he along with his family has traveled like in their own ship across the Pacific Ocean and visited many islands and he has written several books regarding or with the major theme of travel hence he is also known as a travel writer Robert Lewis uh, Robert Lewis Stevenson is best known for his novel Treasure Island Kidnapped Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Hyde and the Master of Ballantrae. His novel Treasure Island and Kidnapped gained a huge popularity. Robert Stevenson died on December 3, 1894 in Velima, Samoa. Students, apart from being a famous novelist and celebrated writer, Robert Stevenson was a very good poet and he has written a collection of poems for children as well and many a times the name of Robert Stevenson is included in one of the most famous writer of children literature. So he has written a poem for children, a collection of poems for children the name of that collection is A Children's Garden of Verses, which was written by him in the year 1885. And Summer Sun is a part of this collection. So the poem Summer Sun is taken from Robert, Levi, uh, Robert Lewis Stevenson's collection of poem A, Gray, a Children's Garden of Verses. And Summer Sun is a perfect example of, of use of a literary technique called personification in which a poet's words bring an inanimate object here the sun to life so personification is basically a literary technique or a way where you uh, give a human quality to a non-living thing most of the time to give a nice look to the poem so in this poem summerson robert louis stevenson has used this technique of personification where he has given sun a life and he has conveyed sun as a living object and he has referred sun as a man and given him pronoun and used to pronounce he for the sun so this literary technique called personification is used throughout the poem some throughout the poem by Robert Lewis Stevenson Students, have you ever thought about the importance of sun in our lives? If not, please take a moment and think. Students, mm -hmm. sun plays a vital role for all the human organisms or you can say all the living organisms that exist on the planet. There cannot be a life without the sun and we cannot imagine a single day without sun. And in this poem, Summerson, the poet has appreciated the gifts of the sun and has described the visual images of the sun, how the sun travels and how he pleases everyone on the earth. So let's start with the poem. Great is the sun and wide he goes through empty heaven without repose and in the blue and glowing days 
more thick than rain he showers his rays so this is the very first stanza of the poem and here the poet has described that the sun is very big and is very wide he has used the adjective great to describe the sun which shows that the sun is very big and we all know that the sun is big and one fact i would like to share with you all is that over 1 million earth could fit fit inside the sun so you can imagine how big and wide the sun is so similarly in this poem the poet has described sun as big great and wide and the poet tells us that how the sun travels from empty heaven without repose empty heaven here refers to sky so he says that the poet says that the sun travels from heaven without repose repose means rest so he is sun without taking rest he travels and come here come or uh, like appears in the sky and in the blue and glowing days now blue and glowing days here refers to summer days more thick than rain he showers his rays so in the blue and glowing days refers to summer days as like in the summer season we can see that the sky is very clear and the color of the sky is blue so the poet has described that sky as a blue and glowing days and the poet tells that in like on summer days the sun showers his rays and the rays are more thicker than the shower, the like than than the drops of the rain so the poet here personifies the sun and calling him as calling him great and he says that the sun travels uh, a vast distance across the empty expanse of the sky without taking any rest and uh, on clear days that is on summer days when the sky is blue the sun's rays come down thicker than the rain so let's take a look at next stanza though closer still the blinds we pull to keep the shady parlor cool yet he will find a chink or two to slip his golden fingers through so uh, let me just first tell you the meaning uh, the word blinds basically means thick curtain that we put on a uh, put on our window and the parlor refers to a room where we um, meet people or act- or actually where we make people sit who are as a guest in our home a sitting room or you can say a living room then chink chink means a crack or a, like a kind of a you can say hole so uh in this stanza the poet says that uh, the sun rays are like in summer days the sun is quite bright and the sun rays are very thick as the poet has already described in stanza 1 that the rays are thicker than the rain drops or the rain showers so we generally put curtains on a window to avoid the sun rays uh, enter into our room but in spite of putting a curtain the po- the poet says that sun makes his way and enter and if you can see on your ski- screen there is an image where is a where i have like described where the room is described and the sun rays are entering the room so similarly the poet has described in this stanza that though closer still the blinds we pull no matter like how thick curtain we put to keep the shady parlor cool to keep our room cool or our uh, like living room cool yet he will find a chink or two now here he refers to sun as i already told that the poet has used uh, the literary technique of personification and in this poem he has described sun as a living object so yet he will find a chink or a two so Uh, he says the poet says that in spite of putting a thick curtain the sun will find a crack or an hole through which he can enter 
to slip his golden fingers through so now the poet has like described the sun rays as his golden fingers so in this stanza the poet says that in the parlor where we meet guests or where we make people sit and even if we draw the thick curtain together uh, to avoid uh, sun rays entering in the room entering in the room the sun manages to find a small or you can say narrow uh, opening to slip his golden rays through here the golden finger fingers is actually an image created by a poet to describe about the sun rays of sun rays so students that's it for today in our next lecture we will cover the next three stanzas of the poem along with the elements of the poem bye take care